Hello and welcome again to Over the Hill Outdoors. A video I made a couple years ago entitled How to Build an Igloo by Yourself has received far more attention than I ever expected. I intended it primarily for Boy Scouts and other winter outdoor enthusiasts interested in learning an additional snow camping skill. Originally I thought maybe I'd have a couple hundred viewers per year, but boy what a surprise. Anyway, based on the many comments and questions received about that video, I realized that perhaps my instructions on a few points weren't as clear as they should have been. So, in hoping to clarify a few things, I've made this follow-up video. It's way more technical than most viewers will probably be interested in. I'd say if you're looking for an entertaining video, you should probably quit watching now. But for those few who are serious about building their own first igloo, I think it will be worth your time. I, I also realize that mine is not the only way to build an igloo. And it may not be the best way for all conditions and all circumstances. But after lots and lots of trial and error, I found this to be the method that I prefer. The goal of my earlier video is simply to teach the basics of igloo dome construction. And that's what I'll focus on again in this video. However, as a side note, I want to mention this. One of the most frequent comments I got about the earlier video had to do with the igloo floor not being above the entrance. Just so you all know, I do understand the principle of cold air being more dense than warm air, and I do understand the advantage of a raised sleeping platform and a cold sink in any snow shelter. But sometimes those aren't realistic options, so do whatever you want to with your igloo floor. Um, but in this video, I'm just going to be talking about the construction of the dome itself. What's happening here, as you're watching, is me snowshoeing in to check an igloo that was made a couple of months earlier by a troop of Northern Utah Boy Scouts. It was their first attempt at building an igloo, and they did a pretty good job. You'll see that it's been partially buried by drifting snow, but it's still solid on the outside and in good condition on the inside. Here I am arriving near the igloo site. I'm going to switch over briefly to the live audio to finish out this segment. Booth here, where we'll see once I step out into this next meadow, we'll see whether the igloo is still there. snow. You can still see a bit of the opening, but still intact. In a couple of minutes, I'll come back to this video as I dig out the entrance that's been mostly blocked by drifting snow. But first, I want to show a series of slides describing some simple rules that I follow when constructing an igloo dome. If you follow these simple fundamentals, I'm confident you'll have much more success in building that first igloo yourself. I'll begin with overall igloo shape. Two terms commonly mentioned in igloo building are hemisphere and catenary. A hemisphere dome is like half of a ball. Its height is equal to its radius. A catenary dome on the other hand, is more like half of an egg. Its height is greater than its radius. I found that catenary dome igloos are easier to build and are stronger than a hemisphere dome. In my opinion, block shape is the single most important factor in igloo building. Dome shape and igloo stability are both determined 
largely by the shape of its individual blocks. Specifically, it's the plane angle of each block end and the plane angle of each block top that are most critical. Block ends should be cut so that the plane of the cut points to the igloo center. I'll try to describe that better with this next diagram. This represents a single block viewed from above and shows each end of the block cut on a plane that points to the center of the igloo. This diagram represents a ring of blocks, again viewed from above, as they form the base of an igloo wall. The end of each block is cut on a plane pointing to the igloo center, much like the spokes of a bicycle wheel point to the wheel hub. This arrangement then results in a circular wall shape, but more importantly, it keeps the blocks from caving into the center. Every block in the entire igloo needs to be cut this way, with both of its cut ends angled toward the igloo center. The top of each block is also of critical importance. It is the plane angle of the block tops that ultimately determines whether the dome is a hemisphere or a catenary. The horizontal plane on the top of each block must point to either the center of the igloo floor, if you're making a hemisphere dome, or it must point to the base of the opposite igloo wall, if making a catenary dome. This diagram represents the end view of a block showing the plane angle of its top pointing toward either the floor center or the base of the opposite wall. If all block tops are cut with the igloo floor center as the target, you'll get a hemisphere. This series of slides now shows hemisphere dome curvature developing as each row of blocks is added. In contrast, if all blocks are cut with the base of the opposite wall as the target, you'll get a catenary. These next few slides show development of a catenary dome. The only difference really is the target point used to cut the blocks. Wall curvature is more gradual in a catenary, which makes it quite a bit easier to keep blocks from falling, especially as you're completing those last final rows on the top. So there you have it, the fundamentals of igloo dome construction. And whether you add the blocks in a continuous gradual upward spiral or as concentric rings as shown in my earlier video, it's entirely up to you. They both work. The key is to make sure that all block surfaces are cut to the proper angle and that each new block is butted up firmly against its neighbor when you place it. Enjoy the rest of the video as you watch me clear out this drifted-in igloo that the Boy Scouts made.